hi everyone welcome back to all my subscribers and if you are viewing this video right now and you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for you know it makes sense today's video is of a more personal nature this time last year i was heavily pregnant due to give birth on boxing day my stress levels didn't even know that it had a level. I mean, it was literally shooting through the roof because on the other side of the Atlantic, my dad was in and out of hospital. You can only imagine the feeling. So because it was around this time of the year, my energy, my, my feelings, my thoughts, it's like I have a roller coaster, roller coaster kind of vibe. I don't even know how to think, how to feel. I'm desperately trying to feel jolly and merry and everything in one. Well, everyone out there, you know, who are going through one thing or the other, I know that during this lockdown, so many people are filing for a divorce and so many people are stressed out. No money is coming in. Businesses aren't even making anything. And again, a lot of people tend to find it difficult to speak to anyone about their problems or they choose not to, like me. I, I Thankfully, I do have people who I cherish in my life that I can speak open, openly with. And I'm blessed to have someone like Edward, like my sis. I have people, I have a handful of people that I can call at any given time and speak to about my issues. Uh, but oftentimes I do suppress my emotions. For all the people out there who are going through stuff, I just want you to know that we're all going through it. That's why when I started my YouTube channel, I decided my, my slogan is going to be every lifestyle has a story. Someone will see you and think that you have it all. I have no worry in the world. Uh, they might think that way. From the outside looking in, it's easy for people to judge. So this video is for you. It's never easy, but stay strong and be positive and make sure you have positive people around you. I knew that this video was going to be a struggle and so I'm trying extremely hard to stay on topic. So just bear with me, bear with me. This this one is, is touchy. It's very touchy and I don't even want to go in depth because videos to come i will talk about i will go in depth about everything but i feel like now i just want to share how i'm feeling in this time so waiting to give birth i think babies are ready to come out whenever whenever they're ready so you can't force anything so in january so mateo was due on boxing day and during that time is when I found out that my dad has one month to live and that took me for a spin. Um, I didn't even know how I was feeling. I didn't know how to cope with it. And to be honest with you, I know that there are a lot of people out there that wanted to reach out and wanted to know what was happening. And I blame it on myself. I blame it on myself. I'm just not that good at as I said, sharing, sharing my, my innermost feelings and how I feel. I only show this side of me to people who I am comfortable with and it takes me a while to even get there. So yeah, so this time of the month, I'm, I'm here and there. My emotions are all over the place. One minute I'll wake up and I feel like I'm fine. And then the next minute I'm in the kitchen. So Everyone grieves differently and this is me. I feel like this is how I grieve because I think you will forever be grieving whenever whenever you lose someone that you love dearly in your life. Um, I was in the kitchen a few days ago and I was doing, I was cooking some soup. Now my dad, uh, soup was his, it, it was like a ritual. 
every other Saturday or every Saturday, he would, you know, put on a pot and he would just do his soup. So I was in the kitchen and I was cooking some soup. And then all of a sudden, I just had a full blown meltdown. Mateo was in the kitchen and I was trying my very best to hold it together. Yes, I was chopping up some onions. So silly me, I'm standing there going, oh, maybe it's the onions, you know. So I'm going a bit closer thinking it's the onions, stupid. Um, but it wasn't the onions. It was just my emotions. I just got so overwhelmed because it took me back to when I was home and daddy was cooking his soup. Whenever I'm in the kitchen doing anything, I would just get emotional. And so since March, I try to avoid the kitchen. And when I am in the kitchen, I somehow try to overdo it so that I don't have room to think. I know it sounds crazy. But this is how I cope, or this is my definition of coping. Um, I think about Jamaica, I think about my sister, my nieces, I think about how they're coping, especially now. Edward and I wanted to be in Jamaica for Christmas, and we wanted to be there because I do understand that this will be our first Christmas without Daddy. And so I wanted to be there to comfort her and, you know, just for us to have somewhat of a family gathering. But that didn't work out because Virgin decided to have Corona tickets. And I call them Corona tickets because it's like sky high. <sighs> we can't buy Corona tickets. So we spending Christmas here. It's half and half for me because last year, this time, I remember he would always call me because as I said, he was in and out of the hospital and he knew that I was due to give birth soon. And I remember he would always call me and say, Lisa, the pit no barn yet. <laughs> and I'm like, daddy, you, you know, you know, the baby isn't going to come until the baby is ready. <laughs> so every time he would pick up the phone, I feel like he was hanging on. He was hanging on because when I was younger, I, I grew up, see, I grew up in a strict family. Daddy was very strict. I mean, you can imagine as a single dad, um, having to, to take care of two girls and you have no clue what to do and you're just doing, you know, everything to the best of your ability. It wasn't the easiest. So I grew up with him saying, me no want no grand pitney before time and all. Don't want no grand pitney before time. Because daddy wasn't the kind of person to to sit you down and to... I mean, we were in our teenage years. So he he. I don't think he was good at sitting us down and, and explaining, you know, everything to us pertaining to you know what. I think he shied away from it. So the best way he could say it was, me no want no grand pitney before time, you know. So when I... When I got to my 20s and heading to my 30s, and I think in his mind, he was going, well, Lisa, you know, so the clock a tick, right? Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> and he would constantly ask me, when am I going to have a child? Because all my siblings have, you know, one or two children, and I'm still sitting there uh, waiting on Mr. Wright <laughs> until Edward came along. <laughs> um but he was always asking, when am I going to have a child? And then when I finally got pregnant, when I finally decided that it was the right time, because I've always said, I've always said I want to be married before I have a child. So that I did. As soon as I got to 34, I'm like, no, I think we, we better get a move on. And so when I got pregnant, it, it, I got so excited. I got so excited because I knew that daddy would have been such a great grandpa. Moya and Shinoya, my two nieces, are so lucky. They are so lucky. They have so many cherished moments. Oh, and Mateo isn't going to have that. So I'm going to have to tell him stories. And Life is so unfair. I find that the ones that you love the most always just... He was always... See, the one thing that I miss about my dad is he had such high spirit like he even when he was on his deathbed he was always joking about stuff always joking always jovial always have something to to say to make you laugh and i don't think he knew that i think that's just how he was and that i miss i miss that so much thankfully i was able in january after giving birth i mean i was so worried i i don't even 
I don't think I've ever been that stressed in my life. I was, I was so ready to give birth to Mateo because I knew that any day now that it would, you know, be gone. And after giving birth to Mateo, Mateo was almost born on, on the 1st of January. Thank God he didn't because then he would have to compete with New Year. So he was born on the 2nd. And it wasn't even a week after giving birth to Mateo. I couldn't wait any longer. I I honestly wanted to bring Mateo with me, but it wasn't possible because time was running out. And from the time when I heard that he only had a month to live and then me giving birth and Mateo didn't have his birth certificate, his birth certificate, nor his um, passport. And I thought, oh, whew. Um, Edward sat me down one day and Edward said, okay, Lisa, I'm the one who's always telling him to calm down. He needs to take a chill pill. But this time around, I was the one where my mind was all over the place. I couldn't even think straight. I didn't even know what I was thinking. And I remember he sat me down and he said, listen, Lisa, we can't all go now because Mateo doesn't have his birth certificate and he doesn't have a passport and you definitely need a passport to travel. And I kept on saying, oh, how long is it going to take? You know, I would like daddy to meet Mateo. Lisa, you know what you'll have to do? I think you'll have to, you will have to just get that ticket and go to Jamaica and just, just go to see him. Because if you wait any longer for us to get Mateo's birth certificate, and his passport, you might end up sitting here and then hear the worst news of your life. And that's what I did. So less than a week after I gave birth, I was on a plane um, headed, heading to Jamaica. And he was so happy. He was in the hospital at the time. And I think the reason why I was so eager to go to Jamaica is he kept on calling me and saying he doesn't want to pass pass away in the hospital. And whether he's in the hospital or he's at home, he's in pain anyway. So he would much prefer to be at home. And that hit me to the core because whatever whatever my dad wants, that's what my dad gets. Um he spoiled us when we were younger and growing up and even in our adult life. So I feel like he was at that point where whatever he needed, that's what he was going to get. To get a private ambulance to get him home. Anyway, long story short, we sorted everything. But the look on his face when he got to the gate, that was priceless. He was so happy. Just the fact that he was not in the hospital, surrounded by strangers. He was at home where he wanted to be. So yes, I have, even though I have mixed emotions during this time, I do have good ones as well. But I just wanted to, to come and share my thoughts and my feelings because I know that there are people out there who are grieving or or they're stressed or they're just not feeling like themselves. I'm one of them. I do go through my my feelings and especially in this time, December and January and February, my worst time because daddy passed away in February. Oh, it's just... Um, it's something I try not to think about too often, but it's something I can't help but to think about. So hopefully, hopefully I wasn't rambling on because I felt like I was. And there's another thing that I wanted to, to say. When Simon Pat Drurillo passed away, I remember when he, Edward said to me, oh, you know, his dad have everything, you know, written down, what people are going to eat, what people are going to drink. He had everything planned out, right? And I remember how I found that funny and I sat down and I was laughing. Edward was laughing saying, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we are. We tend to plan things and so on. I mean, Simon was special. So Simon had everything planned. But then after that, I can recall, I sat down with Edward and I said, you know what, on a serious note, I love the fact that Simon had everything planned out. So when, when he passed away, all Edward needed to do was sit down and call a few people and organize things. Mind you, this was in 2015. So the next time I went to Jamaica, I think I forgot 
twice I went to Jamaica and I forgot. So the last time I remember I said, I said to Edward, can you please remind me to sit with daddy and have this conversation? So I sat him down and I said, daddy, you know, you're not getting any younger. And I think this is something that we need to discuss just in case something happened. At least we know exactly what you want at your funeral, um, at your live yard, because we don't call it dead yard. We call it live yard. Daddy was way too lively for us to call it dead yard. No. So <laughs> the one thing he said to me, he said, said Lisa make sure you cook a big pot of soup big pot of soup and me don't want no pork if you cook pork me go come and box everybody <laughs> and we were just laughing we're just laughing and he said Lisa no dirty music no dirty music <laughs> as if I was gonna play any dirty music <laughs> So no, no dirty music. He said, play some gospel music and then afterwards you can play some um, some oldies kind of music. And I said, okay, fine. Anything else? Beautiful ladies. <laughs> oh, I miss my dad's personality. I really do. I feel like I'm having a mental, a mental breakdown. Mental breakdown. But this is how I have been feeling for the past few weeks. I think as soon as we got into December, everything just came back. Everything. And it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Because I'm half half of me is super excited because it's it's Mateo's first Christmas. And the other half well, it's Mateo's first Christmas and Edward is so excited, which is understandable because his family will be here. Well, my family as well. And the other half is a bit torn because I'm not in Jamaica spending the first Christmas without daddy with my family. So just take, I'm just taking it a day at a time. But this is the this is the Lisa in her down moment. It's as it's as far as down goes. <laughs> I know I know when I'm getting slightly depressed when because with Edward's personality you cannot help but to laugh. Edward is just Edward is special. Edward is Edward, right? And this is how I know when I'm going into depression. If I'm around Edward and Edward end up saying something silly like he always does, I find it so difficult to laugh and I'm like, hold on a minute. Yeah, I need to, I need to snap out of this. I need to find a way to, to snap out of this. It's, it's not, it's not easy. And not only that, I find that here, when, when I'm, when I'm going into depression or if I feel like I'm depressed, it's even harder to come out of depression, especially with this kind of climate. When I when I wake in the morning and I open the curtain, sometimes I don't even open. What am I saying? Sometimes I don't even open the curtain. What's what's the sense? I open the curtain and it looks like it's nighttime out there. What's the sense? So half the time I don't open the curtains. It doesn't really help when you are feeling low. I don't I don't think it helps. So what I tend to do is I turn the lights on in the house and pretend that the sun is shining. Pretend that the sun is shining. I think that is it for now. I I can't say anymore. I can't say anymore. Um I'm sending so much love to my to my lovely sister and to all my family in Jamaica. I must admit that when I speak to my auntie Linda and um, my cousin Shelly, they, they have this, this um, they, they remind me of daddy, you know, their, their warmness and, and how they speak. Uh, so when I speak to auntie Linda, I somehow feel like I'm, I'm talking to daddy. It might sound weird, but that's how I feel. And I so I so miss my grandma. I miss my grandma. 
can't wait to go back to Jamaica. So I've, I've, I've come to the end of my video. So hopefully you will appreciate me speaking up a bit more or trying to speak up about my feelings because this is definitely not something I do often. Please comment um, below. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, if you're going through anything. Let us try and support each other and go through it together. You know, I think if we support each other more, then we won't feel depressed and we will. Depression is here for everyone, especially now in these times. But let's try and be positive and support each other through these rocky times. I'm sending lots of love and until next time, see you guys. Sending lots of love to you all.
I've, I've, I've come to the end of my video and it's not one of my happy videos but this is me and when I started my YouTube channel I did say that I will be sharing more than just me and my happy days so hopefully you will appreciate me speaking up a bit more or trying to speak up about my feelings because this is definitely not something I do often but I feel like we need to do this more often especially if you don't speak to anyone um well especially if you don't find it easy to speak to anyone I am lucky as I said before that I have people in my life that I trust and I can confide in but not everyone is like that please comment um below let me know your thoughts feelings if you're going through anything let us try and support each other and go through it together you know i think if we support each other more then we won't feel depressed and we well depression is here for everyone especially now in these times but let's try and be positive and support each other through these rocky times i'm sending lots of love and until next time, see you guys. Sending lots of love to you all. Mwah. Mwah.